Hi, I'm writer-director Jason Byrne. Jay Byrne is what I go by on my movies. Within the past couple of years, I was involved in a movie called You Better Watch Out. Now, you've heard us, if you listen to uh, the podcasts or if you keep up with Roadkill Entertainment, you've heard us talking about You Better Watch Out quite a bit. I also made a movie called Hometown and a documentary called The Final Episode. However, you know, we've been trying to get this movie out there. We've been trying to get people to watch it. There has been a handful of people that have seen it. We've uh, screened it at a film festival. But we decided, you know what? We just want people to see this movie. And we want you, the fans, anybody who's interested in watching it, to be able to see it. So, at least for the foreseeable future, until January 1st, You Better Watch Out is available to watch for free on you, on the YouTube channel, the Roadkill Entertainment YouTube channel. Easiest way to find it, if you want to check out You Better Watch Out, and this is free, no subscription, no nothing required to watch this movie. You can go on YouTube, you can watch it. If you have a Roku device, literally all you need to type into the Roku device, the search bar for, for your YouTube app on the Roku device is Roadkill Entertainment, You Better Watch Out. It, so it's, it's, it's R E Y. B W O. So R E Y B W O. Just put that into the the you know the little search bar and you're all set. And you can watch, you better watch out for free. If you're on a, a regular computer, you can go to YouTube, just put the little um uh, hashtag symbol and R E Y B W O and you can watch. You better watch out for free. You can watch the whole movie. It's the same exact movie that we've sold, that people have gotten their hands on. Nothing different, nothing changed about the movie whatsoever. So, so please check out our movie um, and, and and write to us. Um, leave comments on our page. Let us know what you think of the movie because you know, we just we just we just want people to see our film. You can also see uh, Hometown, the final episode, and um, uh, an old anthology I call I, I made called VHS. Basically, everything that's available through Roadkill Entertainment is for free to watch on our YouTube channel right now. Um, I'm not sure how long that's going to stay there. Um, Hometown, uh, VHS, and uh, the final episode are probably going to stay there permanently, so you can check those out at your own leisure. You better watch out. may only be there until January 1st. We haven't really discussed that. So from uh, Michael Welch and myself, we put a lot of love and a lot of heart into this movie, and we love it, and we hope people, will, our fans of ours, love it. So please, check out You Better Watch Out, free on YouTube. Just type in R-E-Y-B-W-O into the search engine, and it should come right up. Or you can, you can, you can, just, you can go to the uh, Roadkill Entertainment um, page on, uh, on YouTube, so... Please check out our movie and let us know what you think. Thanks. Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Roadkill Entertainment's Video Village Podcast. And uh, this is going to be a quote-unquote Halloween episode. You'll notice that the beginning and the end of the show have different music on them um, than we usually do. Because this is our Halloween episode. And I'm going to, you know, try to Halloween it up as much as humanly possible. Um, I don't have my buddy Mike with me today uh, because he's got some personal stuff to attend to and uh, he should be back for next month. Um, 
my wife is pregnant and about ready to pop. So with my daughter who's coming, my daughter Alice, who will be showing up very, very soon. And um, so I'm not sure we could miss out on an episode or two in the next couple of months. Um, However, I plan to keep up with this as best as I possibly can. And we should hopefully have a November episode because I've got it scheduled with Mike for uh, us to get together and record something for November. So that should be fun. And, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do today is aside from just an in-depth kind of review of the Halloween series, because it's Halloween, we're going to do Halloween makes a lot. I'm, oh, I'm going to do Halloween makes logical sense. Doesn't it? Um, I'm going to do, you know, a handful of reviews, of some uh, new Blu-rays and stuff that I picked up and, and this and that. And I figure that makes sense uh, for, you know, being that it's just me right now <clears throat> doing this stuff. So, uh, you know, I'll start out with the uh, with the reviews and then we'll get into Halloween, the Halloween franchise. Actually, which will be kind of like a... <sighs> kind of like a extensive review of the blu-ray box set that came out i mean while i talk about the movies as well but i'm going to bring up a movie that i just uh i just picked up uh limited to three thousand copies from twilight time which might actually still be available as of as of now as of this moment twilight time stuff does actually sell out but i don't think this movie sold out yet um it's a movie called audrey rose from 1977 Um, Robert Wise, the guy who directed Sound of Music, uh, The Haunting, West Side Story, he directed uh, Audrey Rose. And I've always been a fan of this movie. Um, You know, some people find it a little cornball, a little cheesy. It's basically the story of this young girl who starts exhibiting weird behavior, almost like she's like... It's kind of exorcist-y. It's like she's possessed. She starts having bad nightmares and stuff. And Anthony Hopkins is in the movie, and he plays this guy who um, who hunts down this family with the young girl and finds them to basically tell them that he believes that their daughter is the reincarnation of his daughter, Audrey Rose, who died in a car accident. And the story basically plays out that way <clears throat> throughout most of the movie. And um, it's basically him trying to convince them that she's the reincarnation. And it gets it gets more. It's almost like a drama thriller, like a thriller type drama rather than a horror movie. But I mean, I don't know. I always found it creepy. And growing up, my dad had the book. And it was always a paperback copy. And it was always sitting in this bookcase. And the cover is this really creepy drawn image of a woman walking out of the fire. And it's, there's, a, there's a gravestone in the back. That says, you know, born, died, born, you know, actually says born 1959, died 1964, born 1964, Audrey Rose. It's kind of cool, actually. But um, funny thing about that is that's actually wrong compared to the movie because the movie says it's 1965. So I don't, I, it's actually taken from the book, I guess. I don't know. It's a little confusing. But um, I've always liked Audrey Rose. Um, I got a little, the transfer isn't bad. I mean, it's an older movie. You got to go in there, expect you know, not expecting miracles. Um, Twilight Time does this thing where they uh, offer an isolated score track, so you can actually listen to the score of the movie separate without the dialogue and stuff like that as well, if you want. And it comes with the theatrical trailer. This is pretty bare bones, and with shipping, it was like thirty four and change. So, I mean, judge whether you care about this movie. If you give a crap about the movie, the release isn't so bad. The transfer is not the greatest. It is a bit of an improvement over the previous DVD because the previous DVD wasn't anything that special. However, it's not a run out and get type of title. You know, it's if you like the movie, you get it. If you don't, you don't. But, um, yeah, so I've got Audrey Rose, Twilight Time. I'm getting a little bit... um. This 3,000, I have a little gripe about Twilight Time. I, I'll, I'll air my gripe. I'm getting a little bit kind of fed up with their limited edition thing that they've been doing. And I know that's their model and that's how they handle things. And fine, I'm, I'm okay with that, that that's their model. It's just for a movie like Audrey Rose, which could have come out at like, you know, $14.99 brand new from the company, just sold anywhere you could find movies that carried any stores that carried you know these type of movies um 
they released it as this like limited edition. And I, I really, maybe Audrey Rose wouldn't have come out by somebody else, but they also released the blob, which I did not pick up. Uh, it's the 1988 remake of the blob. And I, I get kind of frustrated because like, while I'm interested in the movie and I haven't seen the remake of the blob in a long time and I hear it's pretty fun to watch. Um, I just didn't want to spend 35 bucks on it. Like I didn't have the 35 bucks to spend on it at the time. I wanted Audrey Rose over that one. So I went with Audrey Rose instead just because I have an attachment to the movie, Audrey Rose. Um, and I don't know. I just it didn't do too much for me to actually, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm losing my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> it's, I get, I get frustrated with twilight time because you know, they, they put up this $3,000, 3000 limit and people go nuts and everybody has to have their copy of twilight time and the scalpers buy up copies and then it gets hard to get your copy. And I mean, I don't know. I know it's a business model and I know it works for them, but my theory is if you're going to put something out with, we're talking kind of subpar transfer, specifically Audrey Rose, 34 bucks for Audrey Rose was a bit pricey. That's high. I mean, yeah, I wanted the movie, but there's nothing on there. The transfer is nothing special. Like, they should judge. I mean, I would have been willing to do like nineteen ninety nine plus the shipping for Audrey Rose. I think that would have been a fair price. They actually should should kind of tailor their prices to the release. But you know, hey, who am I to say anything? I mean, they're gonna put out a bunch of stuff that I want. And I'm gonna have to buy it from them if I want it anyway. So, but. I mean, I do appreciate that they're putting this stuff out. However, I, I really don't think that if they weren't putting it out that somebody else wouldn't pick it up, like Scream or Scorpion or all these companies right now dealing in horror movies, like low budget, you know, these small horror companies. I can't imagine that these titles wouldn't get picked up by somebody else right now. They just happen to have the license through Sony, and Sony lets them do their, do it, so... Yeah, but that's my little gripe about um, Twilight Time and Audrey Rose. And, you know, it's a good movie. Pick it up if you're interested. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, a revelation as far as transfer is concerned, but, you know, it's a decent movie. So, okay. And now we're going to move on to the next one. Um, this is a movie that I really, really liked. This movie was awesome, and I've been hearing about this movie a lot because I also listened to Killer POV, another podcast. And, um, I've been listening to this movie, uh, I mean, like hearing about this movie a ton. And so I finally, I, you know, I said, screw it. And I just picked it up. It's a movie called the battery. All right. Um, it's an independent film it was made in 2013, um, direct written, and directed by a guy named Jeremy Gardner. Uh, they made the movie, um, what I understand, they made the movie for like $5,000 or something like that, which is like the budget of our movie, but you know what they had some better equipment and stuff but really it's i'm pretty uh, it the acting and the setup of the movie is what really makes the movie it's a zombie movie that doesn't have too much to do with zombies it's very romero-esque in that it's more about the two main characters and their struggle with kind of being by themselves at the end of the world there's these, these two baseball players that um, that I guess they were on the same team, and they ended up together when everything went down, like the end of the world went down. And um, you know, and they're just struggling to get along, and then they become friends and whatnot. And it's 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 a really cool movie. It's hard to I don't want to give away the whole movie because there's not a lot to give away. If you're a fan of Romero esque zombie type stuff, I mean, there's not a lot of zombies in the movie, so be aware of that. But the way that they they represent the zombies is very creative and there's a whole sequence towards the end that is awesome. I just don't want to give away too much about the movie. I'm going to kind of go as spoiler free on this one as I possibly can. But, um, yeah, so the battery is totally worth it. Check it out. It's a independent low budget movie. Probably one of the best movies I've seen in years, horror wise. And this movie was made for like $5,000. So that tells you right off the bat that it's not about budget. It's about acting plot story. So, yes. So that is that. And so check out the battery. Uh, Screen Factory put it out. It, uh, they put it out in a really cool special edition. It has an awesome, like, 80-minute documentary on the making of it, which um, I think was probably – it was made by somebody involved in the production. Um, but it's a great documentary, and they talk about how the movie got made. And, I mean, it's just really inspiring. If you're, if you're a filmmaker, these are the type of documentaries you want to watch because it shows you that it can be done. So – so yeah, so that's the battery. 
Um, another blue. Uh, oh, and the transfer is 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 perfectly fine for what it is. I mean, it's shot HD. I think they shot it with one of those uh, Canon DSLR cameras. So I mean, it has it has a perfectly acceptable HD look. I mean, it's a modern movie and it's shot in HD, low budget, so it has that look. But I mean, for a Blu-ray, it's quite well. I mean, if if you weren't a big fan of gambling on buying a Blu-ray for that much money, which is really only like fifteen bucks if you find it at the right place, sixteen. 17 around there yeah you could you can find it at walmart on dvd like the dvd is at walmart so and it's um, i think it's like 10 bucks or something like that Uh, it's really cheap so it's it's not a hard movie to find so the battery is definitely a recommendation um okay wrong turn six i picked this up the other day you know i've got a special a soft spot for these wrong turn sequels and i've watched them all and actually, one through three, one one through three. Actually, one tends to be the, my least favorite, which is kind of funny. Um, they're just a crazy little movie. Although I gotta say, this movie is pretty ambitious for part six. Like, I I don't know if you've, anyone who's seen the uh, Wrong Turn series, but basically, it's about this kid who he's kind of like a I don't know. A Wall Street type kid, you know what I mean? He's, he's he invests in things. Him and his friends, they they have money. It was an interesting group of characters. They end up at this old, like a hotel that he inherits from. You know, it's it's in his bloodline. It's in his family line. And you come to find out, this hotel has something to do with the uh, the hillbilly freaks that live in the woods and. And the whole, you know, wrong turn bunch of backwood freak type people. And it's it's really pretty cool. The story really just kind of develops on the fact that they're trying to convince him that he belongs with them. And, and his friends are getting killed off. And there's a lot of sex in it. So if you like movies with tits and ass, you know what I mean? It's It's got plenty of that. But actually the movie's a lot. It's almost classier than that. It's, it's funny to say this movie rides a weird fine line between complete trash and trying to be a little classy. Like the previous sequels, like four and five, were trash, but they're they're completely entertaining. I mean, these are just slasher movies with hillbillies ripping up stupid teenagers. So if if, if you if you like that kind of thing, check it out. Um, the DVD is 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 reasonable. I mean, you can get it pretty cheap at like Best Buy and shit for like thirteen bucks right now. Um, <coughs> the bonus features, I haven't really gotten into them. I don't think there's too much on here anyway. It has all the kills from all the films, which is kind of random feature at just want to sit there and watch all the murders from the movies okay fine but that's that um so that is wrong turn six it's not too much too much more i can say about wrong turn six but pick it up if you are so inclined another movie directed by a person that i actually had a a general acquaintance with um finally came out on blu-ray this movie was never available even on dvd Not in the United States, anyway. A movie called To All a Good Night, directed by David Hess. Came out by uh, Kino Lorber. Actually, it's like four different companies. MGM, Kino Lorber, Scorpion. And it has interviews with the stars, uh, Jennifer Runyon and Catherine Catherine Harrington. The movie uh, was made in 1980. And um, this is like low-budget, cheesy slasher fare from the 80s. It's actually a Santa slasher, and... They they claim that it might be the first one, but I'm not sh- I'm not sure about that. But there's a there's a good possibility that it's the first Santa slasher. Um, a bunch of uh, girls end up at this house. They stay staying at this. Wait, it's I want to say it's not a sorority, but it's like a boarding house or something like that, right? Um, ah, okay. Uh, they are boarders at the Calvin Finishing School. <clears throat> Shows you how kind of <laughs> mindless this movie is. You can't even remember the general details. Um, and they're basically they, they they want their their boyfriends to come down for the weekend and hang out with them so they they devise a plan to get them there and while they're there of course you've got uh, somebody killing them off in a santa costume <clears throat> and it plays out to a pretty decent twist which i won't give away but it this is just cheesy trashy 80s slasher film if you're a fan of movies like final exam um god final exam (laughs) if you're a fan of movies like of that ilk splatter university like the cheesier ones from the early 80s this is a fun movie to watch do not go into this expecting like a serious movie because 
it's very silly. Actually, I got to say the transfer is very good for this particular movie because all I've ever seen of this movie was a VHS copy and you know, it's uh yeah, it, it it was so dark in certain spots that you couldn't even see what was going on. So definitely worth picking up. Um like I said it has interviews with the uh with stars Jennifer Runyon and Katherine Harrington and with writer producer Alex Rebar, um, who actually played the Incredible Melting Man in The Incredible Melting Man. So that's kind of interesting. And it has the trailer. So, you know, it's 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 a worthwhile release. It's not too easy to get your hands on. I think you, you most places don't carry it in store, so you'd have to order it off Amazon. But um definitely this is uh David Hess of Last House on the Left fame, his uh directorial debut. And, you know, <laughs> he was a great guy. I can't say too much about this movie. He made a a slasher film. He knew what he was doing. Tits and ass. Actually, there's not even a lot of nudity in this movie now that I think about it. But there's a little bit. And um and kills. And girls getting killed off at a at a boarding school, at a finishing school. So there you go. If that's your thing, then check out To All a Good Night. Definitely kind of like a lost gem from the 80s. Actually, it's 1980, the movie. So Twilight Good Night's great. All right, now we get into the Scream Factory releases. Um, I'll, I'll mention this one first because this one is actually a big deal release that Scream Factory put out right now because, I mean, uh, Nightbreed, the director's cut. Now, I'm going to start this off by saying I did not get the limited edition, like $70 version because I personally remember not caring that much for the original version of the movie. But I'm also aware of the fact that the movie went through a lot of bullshit. So, um, and Clive, Clive Barker's vision of the movie wasn't represented in the original. So now Scream Factory went out of the way through this whole, there's a whole process behind it. Like there was this movement, this Occupy Midian movement that fans put up where they were showing a, uh, a work print version of, the, of it called the Cabal Cut around in festivals. And they were trying to get attention so that the movie could be re-released in a a proper director's cut and scream factory got the rights and well they they contacted clive barker they actually found the original negative and they restored the movie to basically uh for all intents and purposes like it says that this it this is clive barker's director's cut he was he was totally involved and it. it even has like a thank you and an introduction before it and everything so this is the version of the movie that Clive Barker is happy with and that he basically what he wanted people to see back in 1990. Yeah, 1990 when this movie came out. So that being said, I have to say it's a far better movie than I remembered it to be. I actually really, really enjoyed it when I rewatched it last night. And I, I don't know, I'll, I'll, it'll be a mo- it's a movie I'll be rewatching. The transfer is great. The sound's a little weird. I mean, it's really heavy on the bass, and sometimes the dialogue gets a little lost. But, I mean, it was a reconstruction. However, most people wouldn't notice that. I'm a techie, so I notice these things. And, I, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a perfectly acceptable transfer, a really good transfer. It has, like, a 72-minute documentary on the making of the movie, which I'll say is okay. I've gotten halfway through it, and I got a little bored because the actors were just kind of pontificating on their roles and kissing each other's butts you know my attitude lately with, with these documentaries is because Scream Factory has been putting out great releases and they've been putting documentaries on everything I almost think they're overdoing it to a certain extent though because some movies don't even have anything to talk about and they're you know getting somebody trying to make like a 72 minute documentary the thing that kind of aggravates me about this is Clive Barker is not involved in the documentary although he was involved in everything else He's, there's a commentary from him on here as well I mean, I understand the man has been sick as well, so maybe that has something to do with it. But I do find it weird that all this work went into it, yet Clive Barker is not in the documentary. I don't know. Maybe he's just not one that talks, likes to talk about his movies and be interviewed anymore. I don't know. He probably has something like that going on. But regardless, great transfer. A huge improvement over what I remembered from the previous version of the movie. I mean, maybe you're a fan of Nightbreed from back in the day, and that's cool. I just I never cared for the movie in its original form, and actually, I'm not even kind of sad that I don't have the limited edition. I mean, the only thing missing is a is a, a second disc of bonus features and a disc with the original theatrical cut. 
but they're charging like $70 for the limited edition. Whereas this is a regular $20 release and you get the director's cut, uh, the documentary on the making and, uh, and a commentary and a handful of bonus features in a, you know, a, a typical Scream Factory style packaging. It has the, the outer sleeve with, I don't know if this is new art or if this is original artwork that was created. I think this might be original artwork that was created, but you have the flip sleeve on the inside that has the original poster art from Nightbreed, which is pretty awesome. So classic Scream Factory you know, the way that they usually handle their releases. So it's definitely worth it. If you're interested in this movie, check it out. I would say that it's definitely a horror movie, but it's more of horror, a horror fantasy movie, kind of along the lines of a Guillermo del Toro type movie. So definitely worth it. Um, and yeah, check it out. I, I really enjoyed it. So Nightbreed, the director's cut, like I said, I don't have the limited edition, so I can't comment on that too much. But I can say that this is definitely worth the $20 I paid for it. So all right, move on to another Scream Factory release that I just picked up, um, Squirm, which I freaking love this movie. I've always loved this movie uh, from 1976, directed by Jeff Lieberman. Um, he has kind of a trilogy of like horror thriller movies, Squirm, Just Before Dawn, and a movie called Blue Sunshine, which was available by Synapse on DVD, but it hasn't come out on Blu-ray yet. Uh, although Just Before Dawn did come out by uh, Code Red. Um, this is the best of the three. I think, well, I don't know this and just before dawn. It depends on your style. They're very different movies. This was, you know, a response to the nature gone wild kind of movies of the seventies. It really a response to jaws. Jaws kind of started it all, but, um, squirm is awesome. I friggin love squirm. It's like an icky, ooky classic movie about, you know, you, you've got this. Um, okay. Let me see if I can get this. You've got, basically a handful of main characters the movie takes place in georgia in these really kind of run down old towns with like local regional type actor people in the movie there are also some new york actors trying to do like southern accents which you know i, I honestly i never really noticed it but apparently they come off a little cheesy there's a 33 minute documentary on here with um jeff lieberman which is pretty pretty fascinating this one's actually good it's entertaining and <clears throat> um yeah and i don't know squirm it's just it's it's a fun monster movie like icky like you know nature gone wild movie from the 70s you've got two main characters just trying to figure out why people around them are dying and uh one guy's from the city he's visiting this girl who lives in like hick town who he met at some convention or something i, I forget what they said they met but they met somewhere and he came down to visit her and he's staying with her family and people around them are dying and they're trying to figure out why. And then they start to figure out it has something to do with worms. And the whole thing is worms are being pushed out of the ground by the hordes. And there is some craziness at the end of this movie with we're talking like thousands and thousands of worms. So if, if you can't watch a movie with like icky worms, and, I mean, this movie goes overboard. They were saying when this movie came out in the movie theaters that the audience was just freaking out. Like it's a it's a it's a great crowd pleaser and it's a fun, awesome movie. It's got like the um, the the, uh, the the collector's edition from Screen Factory with the the slip cover and the the inside flips. The inside cover, is it reversible? And it has the original poster art, which is an awesome looking poster I've always loved. And I don't know. It's a classic, classic fucking movie. Awesome release. I cannot recommend this movie more if you're a fan of 70s, like Nature Gone Wild type of movies. It's probably the best of its kind. Classic, creepy, squirm. The transfer looks great. Um, I haven't listened to the commentary yet, but there's a commentary on here. There's inter And the interviews are awesome. And the little documentary... Um, it says a tour of the locations with Jeff Lieberman. That's a bit misleading because it's not a tour of the locations. It's actually a tour. Uh, he brings you to the house that he lived in when he came up with the idea. And he kind of shows you how he came up with the idea for Squirm. That's it. So that's a little misleading. But um, definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of these type of movies. Squirm, freaking awesome. Very excited. I'm glad I finally have this. Okay. Now on to the main subject of this podcast, this episode, which is Halloween, the complete collection. And I am going to kind of combine my Blu-ray review with my movie overview for this one, because that seems to be the smartest way to go about it. Um, 
I will start by saying the this um, I I am reviewing and talking about the 15 disc deluxe edition that Scream Factory and Anchor Bay put out together. And man, it is a thing of beauty. I there are people that aren't you know too happy with the packaging of it, of course, because there's always somebody that doesn't like anything. But um, you get all what do we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all ten halloween movies uh from the franchise individually in their own cases with the original poster art on each case it's in, with, a, with a, it's in a black case so it looks kind of sleek actually the black kind of makes sense because it's almost like bo- the border of a poster frame you know it's it's really nice and it comes in this sturdy like cardboard box where you know you can display either side with the spines all out it looks really nice and it comes with a little booklet with an essay which is really freaking cool it's it's an awesome friggin release i mean there is one minor issue right now with um halloween 4 there is a synchronization problem on the disc at a certain point around the 46 minute mark it starts to go out of sync and it stays out of sync for like 10 minutes and then it fixes itself uh, Anchor Bay does have a replacement program in place right now. I mean, you can go on Blu-ray.com and look that up. Um, go to Anchor Bay uh, and look that up or Screen Factory and just look up information about that on how to actually get an exchange for your disc. It, to the best, there are no fixed discs in circulation right now. So in order to get your replacement, you would have to go, you'd have to buy the set and then get your disc replaced through Anchor Bay. But it's really not that hard. It's a very simple process. No money involved on your part. Literally, you email them and you uh, you, ha- you have to sh- you have to like scan in your proof of purchase, like your receipt or something like that. Um, it's a really simple process. But um, okay, so we're gonna go and here is uh, I'm just gonna get started right away. The only thing I do have to say about this set, the only complaint that I have about this set is that it is a lot of repurposed material. Most of these discs have been released before. Um, The Halloween 1 disc, Halloween 2 disc, 3, 4, 5, those are all the same discs that have previously been available. Except for Halloween 1, they actually fixed um, the original mono track, and now it has the original mono track on it. Um, New discs, though, Halloween 6, which has the theatrical cut and the... the, uh, the producer's cut which has been like a bootleg for years which is really cool to see restored i'll talk more about that afterwards h2o and resurrection are um are new transfers and they they look pretty i mean they're new to the united states i think they're the same transfers that were available overseas but um yeah it's h2o is finally in its proper aspect ratio with with proper 5.1 sound and some bonus features Good stuff. It's it's definitely worth it. Halloween one and two are the Rob Zombie ones are the same discs that were available prior. The uh, so it is a lot of repurposed material, but it's great to have it all in this one collection. And and also the box itself, the bottom of my box seems to be like like the the, the black because it's all black. It seems to be like the black seems to be scraping off like the ink on the box. But um, yeah, that's that's really the only complaint that I have. It's a little scuffed up, and it seems to be like the ink seems to be coming off the bottom of it. But you know what? It's about the movies and not the packaging, and that's the way that goes. So let's start off here. Halloween 1978, directed by John Carpenter. This is one of the all-time classic horror movies. Like, I mean, if you've never seen the original Halloween and you're a fan of horror movies, you need to you need to get your hands on it and see it because this is just a classic thriller. It inspired all the slasher movies to come later, even though it's a far classier movie than most of those slasher movies are. 1978. Okay. Um, actually, according to IMDb, what I'm looking at right now, it was actually released on October 25th, 1978, which is cool, right next to Halloween. Um, it was written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, who uh, also worked together on a handful of John Carpenter films, like The Fog and, um, let's see, uh, Assault on Precinct 13, uh, Escape from New York, classic John Carpenter stuff. But Halloween 1 is a great, classic, moody film. I've been a huge fan of it for years. And I mean, there's not a heck of a lot I can say about the movie other than it's so worth your time and your effort. And I mean, come on. I mean, it, it's Halloween. It's John Carpenter's Halloween. This mo- And okay, 
So we'll talk a little bit about the disc. Um, like I said, it's in a black Blu-ray case and it has the original poster art on the front of it. And it looks pretty classy when you're actually looking at it. Um, it has an audio commentary by writer-director John Carpenter and actor Jamie Lee Curtis. This is a newly recorded one. I think it's... um. Uh, it was uh, moderated by Sean Clark, the guy who does Horrors Hollowed Grounds, which is a ton of those on this set, too. Um, new audio, And there's also a new audio commentary with director of photography Dean Cundy, editor Tommy Lee Wallace, and The Shape, Nick Castle. That's pretty cool. Um, there's a cool featurette on here. It's called The Night She Came Home. It's uh, like an hour long. It's all about uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's kind of one-off convention appearance that she did. I think it was a horror hound event. And um, it basically it stays with her the whole time, and Sean Clark was involved in it as well. It's really freaking cool. Um, there's a on location 25 years later feature app, so that's kind of cool. Um, what is that on location 25 years later? I think it's just a um, uh, like a, a behind the scenes type of thing. I ha I'm not too sure. There's footage from the TV version that was shot for Halloween Two. Well, it's a TV. They shot it around the state while they were shooting Halloween Two, and it got added into the television version for Halloween. That's on here. The theatrical trailer, TV and radio spots, and they included both discs that Anchor Bay had put out before. They have the new disc and the original disc because some people prefer the transfer from the old disc because the color timing's better. However, the new transfer is amazing, and it's. It's 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 uh it was supervised by Dean Cundy, the actual cinematographer, and it looks I can't imagine anyone wanting to watch any other version of Halloween. So it looks gorgeous. <clears throat> Definitely worth it. Check it out. It includes the original mono soundtrack, if that's the way you want to listen to the movie, and a newly made 5.1 soundtrack, which is quite good. Actually 7.1, I think. Uh yeah, 7.1, which is quite good. There's some new sound effects in there, but it sounds amazing. Um and oh, and the disc two also features like a feature length documentary on the making of it called Halloween, a cut above the rest. So that's awesome. Um, so yeah, so Halloween one, friggin' amazing movie. Introduction of a classic horror icon, Michael Myers. Um, the story of a psychotic murderer institutionalized since childhood for the murder of his sister escapes and stalks a bookish adolescent girl and her friends while his doctor chases him through the streets. There you go. <laughs> That's the movie in a nutshell. And so, I mean, there's not too much I can say about the original Halloween, although it's friggin' awesome. I love it. Uh, first time I ever saw the original Halloween movie, I when I was younger, I always appreciated it, although it's kind of a slow burn type horror movie. So, like, when I was younger, maybe I didn't like it as much as, like, the sequels because I thought the sequels were, you know, more faster paced, so to speak. But, um... Yeah, the original Halloween, great fucking movie. Definitely check it out uh, if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, a great performance is all around. It introduces uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as the Scream Queen, where she became like the Scream Queen for like you know this Terror Train, Prom Night, which I freaking love. Prom Night, by the way. Um, the Fog, she's also in the John Carpenter movie. That's her Scream Queen era, and of course H two O, she reprised her role as Laurie Strode. And in Resurrection, she's in the very beginning of it. Um, so, yeah, so you got Halloween 1, okay? And then Halloween 2, what is it? From the people who brought you Halloween, more of the night he came home. Same thing with this one. Original poster art, black case, awesome. Um, Halloween 2 is a great sequel. I've always loved Halloween 2. When I was younger, I actually liked Halloween 2 better. I originally saw Halloween 2 on network television, which had a ton of extra scenes in it, That, uh, which they've included a DVD of the television cut, which is pretty impressive because some of us originally saw it like that, and there's a lot of different scenes in it. It's rumored that the television cut of Halloween 2 is actually Rick Rosenthal's cut of the film with less violence. However, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a mishmash version of the film anyway. But it is really cool as, an, as, as a curiosity to check out. But Halloween 2 is awesome. It literally takes place exactly where the original Halloween ends. And it continues. So Halloween 1 and 2, like, you could put them together as one movie. Although they have different tones. Um, it's, this, it's one story about the night he came home, you know, and it, the movie takes place in a hospital. Laurie Strode is now in the hospital. I just kick something if you're wondering what that bang was. <laughs> Laurie Strode is now in the hospital and she, yeah, 
she's being stalked by the shape, by her, who you find out is her brother. A little bit of a spoiler there, but you know, I'm talking about the Halloween movies. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most of you people who are listening to this have seen the Halloween movies. Um, yeah, Halloween 2 is great. It's a little gorier, so they kind of got into the 80s you know gore thing with it because it's a sequel um not directed by john carpenter actually directed by rick rosenthal who um i think was an assistant to john carpenter at 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 some point and john carpenter and deborah hill did write it it's just written by john carpenter and deborah hill so you know and this this movie was um the original movie was 1978 but halloween 2 came out in 1981 so a couple years later and um, it says it was released on October 30th, 1981 in the USA. So it was written by Deborah uh, Hill, John Carpenter, directed by Rick Rosenthal. So that's pretty cool. And I mean, I've always just been a huge fan of Halloween 2. Halloween 1 and 2, classic. Some people will skip the sequels. I, you know, those, are, those Halloween 1 and 2 are awesome movies. And uh, on the Blu-ray, it's the same Blu-ray that's been available from Screen Factory. I had talked about this in one of my earlier podcasts where i focused on screen factory stuff actually it's an audio commentary by rick rosenthal uh, audio commentary with stunt coordinator dick warlock let's see um a television cut is included nightmare isn't over it's the making of halloween 2 which is pretty interesting horror's hollowed grounds with sean clark where he goes and visits the locations where the film was made um that's pretty cool uh let's see deleted scenes an alternate ending and still gallery and all that. It is, it's a good special edition. It's well worth it. If you have the previous Scream Factory special edition, be aware that this is the exact same disc. It's exactly the same. There's nothing different about it um, other than the packaging. So just, you know, be aware of that. So this way, you know, you know you're not, you're not upgrading. You're, you, you're buying it for the packaging at this point. But all right. So now we are going to skip ahead to Halloween 3. Okay. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Which I've always loved this movie. Um, uh, same packaging, original poster art, black case uh, for the, uh, the the Blu-ray release. I've always been a fan of Halloween 3. Now, they killed off Michael Myers at the end of Halloween 2. So the, the deal with Halloween 3, which came out in 1982, a year later was that they were going to go in a different direction with the story. John Carpenter Deborah, and Deborah Hill said, we should come up with a new story every, Hall- uh, every Halloween or every other Halloween, whenever they could get one made, where it would be a new, just Halloween-based story. It had nothing to do with Michael Myers. Like an anthology film, like uh, like TV series, with a different, epi- diff- different story each episode. So that was the idea behind it. And the, the movie basically takes place on around halloween night and it's all about this uh this company the um one second here sorry called silver shamrock that makes these masks and the masks themselves are okay here's the uh, imdb description so it makes a, a large halloween mask making company has plans to kill millions of american children with something sinister hidden in halloween masks it's directed by tommy lee wallace like I said, came out in 1982, actually released in the theater in the United States, October uh, 22nd, 1982, according to IMDb, anyway. Um, it stars Tom Atkins, which is awesome. <laughs> Tom Atkins is great from uh, Night of the Creeps. Um, yeah, that's, I know him from that, and this is Night of the Creeps, really, are the two movies that I know Tom Atkins from. But um, basically, he plays a doctor who discovers what's going on, and he's trying to figure out he something is up, and he ends up hooking up with the daughter of a guy who ran a shop who sold these masks who disappeared. And then the whole movie is like this mystery. It's very like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's almost more of a sci-fi horror movie than like a straight thriller horror movie. But I've always been a huge fan of this film and I love it. And, you know, some people like it, some people don't. I think a lot of a lot of people have problems with it because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. They've got issues with it because Michael Myers is missing from it. Fair enough. But um, if it had it come out just called Season of the Witch, I think it probably would have done better on its own. It's it's garnering a pretty good cult following now. So um, definitely a great movie. I've always loved Halloween 3. You know, great sequel. Still a worthy sequel. we got 1, 2, and 3 here. All well worth watching. So we the series hasn't lost it yet. 
Um, which, you know, it's questionable as to how much the series lost it. But regardless, Halloween 3, awesome movie. Um, the uh, Blu-ray that came out of it, um, like Halloween 2, this is the same exact Blu-ray release that came out f- prior from Scream Factory. It contains an audio commentary with writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace, a documentary called Stand Alone, The Making of Halloween 3. Um, it's got Hara's Hollowed Grounds, again, uh, with Sean Clark uh, visiting the locations. I love watching those. Those are great. Um, a still gallery and the theatrical trailers and TV spots. So yes, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, awesome friggin' movie. Okay, Definitely worth checking out. Be aware, no Michael Myers in this one, but still a cool, kick-ass, like, 80s little an 80s sci-fi thriller horror movie so all right now we move ahead to the next one is halloween 4 the return of michael myers now apparently when you get to a certain point you know halloween 3 didn't do so great do so hot for him but halloween 4 is many years later because what do you say um halloween 1982 for halloween 3 halloween 4 didn't come out till 1988 so they, they wanted to reboot the franchise. They wanted to bring it back to, you know, what it was. So they bring back Michael Myers. Um, it came out in 88, uh, released in the theaters in the U.S., according to IMDb, on October 21st, 1988. Uh, Dwight H. Little was the director. It was written by a guy named Donnie Lipsius? Lipsius? Larry Ratner? There's a bunch of credits for the writers, so it went through some writing changes here. You've got Donald Pleasance in it, uh, an actress named Ellie Cornell. Danielle Harris, this is the introduction of Danielle Harris to the horror world, playing uh, Jamie Lloyd, who actually is the daughter, supposed to be the daughter of Laurie Strode. But, like, she's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting plot. But, uh, okay, here's the uh, here's the synopsis. Ten years after his original massacre, the inv- invalid... It's funny they call him an invalid. Michael Myers awakens and returns to Haddonfield to kill his seven-year-old niece on Halloween. And Dr. Loomis returns, and can Dr. Loomis stop him? A repeat of basically the same idea as the original Halloween. Um, You know, I go back and forth on this movie. When I was a kid, I loved it. I overwatched it and kind of got burnt out on it. Now rewatching it again, I appreciate it. It's, it's, It's a great movie. Um... The lighting and, and, and the sets sometimes feel a little stagey. Like, to me, it, it, there's elements of it that feel stagey. What I never really understood is that there's a... Is why they feel the need to change Michael Myers' mask all the time. Because Michael Myers' mask gets kind of cheesy looking after a while. And this is where the mask starts to get cheesy looking. So, you know, that that kind of ruins it. Not I wouldn't say ruins it, but um, sometimes that kills it for me when I'm watching the sequels. <clears throat> it's more about the math. But this movie is great. It's it's really entertaining. And yeah, it's just a fun, fun movie to watch. <clears throat> um, the Blu-ray that is available in this set is essentially the same exact Blu-ray that was available from Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay released Halloween 4 and 5 on Blu-ray. However, Halloween 4 included um, a panel discussion that is, is it's, they say it's not included. It is technically on the disc. It's just hidden. But you can't, there's no cookie or anything on the disc that you can access it by. If you have a program where you can open the disc files, you will notice the file is actually still on the disc. You just can't access it. Um, However, this is the disc that has the sync problem that I mentioned before. And they do have a replacement going on right now. And I'm not sure. Maybe they're going to give us the, uh, I don't think they can. I think legally they had to remove the panel discussion. But you can get that panel discussion on Halloween 25 Years of Terror is what it's called. It's a collection of panel discussions in this whole convention that they did. And that's what it was from. And it's available through Anchor Bay. So you can buy all those panel discussions separately. So if you don't have that disc, then you can get that disc as kind of an addendum to this. More bonus features. Um, it does have the audio com- audio commentary with uh, Ellie Cornell and Daniel Harris. Audio commentary with the director, Dwight Dwight Little and the author, Justin Bean, and a theatrical trailer. I like Halloween 4. I appreciate it. I've watched it so many times, I get a little burnt out on it. But, um, I mean, it does introduce us to Daniel Harris in the horror scene as Jamie Lloyd, classic character in the series. And, yes, that's Halloween 4. Halloween 4, what I say, came out in 1988, right? Yeah. So, there you go. Now we move on to Halloween 5. Okay, going through the series here. Um... And uh, like I said before, even though these are the same discs that were previously released, they're repackaged in this set 
with the original poster art on the cover. Um, yeah, the original and, and in a black case. So Halloween five. Now, you know, I have a soft spot for this movie. A lot of people don't like Halloween five. They, they, they find it bad for some reason. I kind of think it's better than Halloween four, to be honest with you. Like I, I, I enjoy it more than Halloween four now, maybe because I didn't watch it as much growing up, but Halloween five is 1989. So basically the year later and like Halloween one and two, it takes place from the right where Halloween four ends. And you've got pretty much most of the same cast. It was directed by a guy named Dominique Oth- Othanen Gerard, who was a French director they brought on. And he kind of gave it like a uh, an experimental flair. He gave the, the movie a bit of an experimental flair. So... So yeah, so it's a little different, but it's still, it's a slasher movie from the late 80s, and I find it a lot of fun. It's a, um, writers, it, it credits um, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill once again as writers. That's not true, actually, on IMDb. It is written by Michael Jacobs, Dominique Othan Gerard, and Shem Bitterman, according to the credits, so yeah, who knows. But uh, Return of Donald Pleasance, entertaining movie in its own right, um, not much you can say about it. Halloween five is a slasher film, you know, <laughs> it, Michael Myers come back, kills a bunch of people, but there's some cool stuff going on in this. And I, I think, I think the cinematography is kind of cool in this movie. Like it's filmed really well. It doesn't feel as stagey as Halloween four, Halloween four films. Like it's, it feels like it's filmed on sound stages the way it was lit. This one, like it has more natural lighting and it, it has a creepier, more, I think it feels more like the originals. I mean, maybe people will disagree with me on that, but, um, and once again, you know, they start playing around with the mask, although the mask in Halloween five actually seems a little better to me. It seems to be one of the better masks in the series. Um, supposedly according to a thing I heard on killer POV podcast, there was a featurette that was supposed to be included on this box set that shows Tommy Lee Wallace taking an original, um, Shatner mask and uh, William Shatner mask and turning it into the Michael Myers mask. And it's like, perfect which it's not included for some reason, maybe because he shows up all the, you know, the effects guys who for whatever reason couldn't get the mask right. But I don't, I don't think it's fair to blame them for that. Everyone was always trying to change the mask and make the mask look creepier when the original mask was the best looking mask of the bunch. One and two really had it as far as the mask is concerned. Uh, And actually I think Rob Zombie uh, really nails it with his version of the mask. He did like a better version of the mask, but, um, Okay, Halloween 5, this is the same exact disc that uh, Anchor Bay previously released. The same exact one. Audio commentary with actor Don Shanks and author Justin Beam. Audio commentary with the director Dominique Othan and Gerard. And actors Daniel Harris and Jeffrey Landman. Um, Halloween 5 on the set is a promotional, like a featurette on the thing. And uh, Halloween 5 original promos and a theatrical trailer. So this is uh, the same disc that was available repackaged for the set. And as I watched through it. There's nothing wrong with that disc as far as I can tell. So, um, all right. So now we're getting to the part of the set. This is really what was the sell for Scream Factory. And almost the reason for doing the set was Halloween. And it's funny to say this, but Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. It's actually just called Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. All right. What they've included in this is um, there was a... For years, it was there was a rumored to be another cut of this film because if the film always felt a bit incomplete, there was a producer's cut out there in bootleg form. Well, Anchor, um, Screen Factory, and Anchor Bay, mainly Screen Factory, did all the work on this. Um, they found, um, I guess it's transferred from, I think it says original vault materials is all it really says, but um, where is it? Does it actually say on here? I don't know. Anyway. It's transferred from like an original, you know, interpositive print or a negative. I think they might have found the negative. I'm not sure. Of the producer's cut. So we've got that original producer's cut in pristine quality on this set. There's two discs included with this set. Um, special features, tons of stuff. New audio commentary with screenwriter director, screenwriter Daniel Ferens and composer Alan Haworth for the producer's cut. New uh, Jamie story, an interview with the original Jamie actress, Danielle Harris, uh, because she wasn't in this version, and she basically tells her story as to why she wasn't in this version. Um, Like, a bunch of legal crap and stupid stuff happened. Um, 
New, the, uh, the Cursed Curse, an interview with producers Malika Cod and Paul Freeman about the producer's cut. Uh, new uh, Acting Scared, a look at the film's cast with actresses Mariah O'Brien and J.C. Brandy. Um, the, the J.C. Brandy is the one who played uh, Jamie Lloyd in Halloween 6. New The Shape of Things, a look at Michael Myers' murders and mayhem with special makeup effects artist John Buchler and uh, Brad Hardin and actor George P. Wilder, who play, Wilbur, who played Michael Myers in the movie. Uh, new Haddonfield Horrors, The Sights of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers with director of photography Billy Dixon in production, designer Brad Ryman and director of photography uh, Thomas Calway. Additional scenes, it says. Oh, oh he's, he filmed the additional footage that they filmed to try to make the movie better after the producer's cut didn't fare too well. Although the producer's cut, it, honestly, both versions of these movies aren't, but this movie isn't that great. I've always, I appreciate the movie and I like the movie. But neither one is perfect. You could almost like argue that you could kind of put the two of them together and make a better version of the movie. Just both of them. Well, both versions of the movie are included here. Producer's cut and the theatrical cut. Uh, new Phil Circle, an interview with composer Alan Howarth. New cast and crew tribute to Donald Pleasance. Archival interviews and behind-the-scenes footage. Behind-the-scenes footage, 30 minutes of it. Alternate deleted scenes not present in either cut of the film. Uh, teaser trailer for Halloween 666, the origin of Michael Myers, which I remember that teaser trailer because it was called Halloween 666, which is funny. Uh, theatrical trailer, TV spot, still gallery. This is a packed special edition for this movie, which is amazing because whoever thought Halloween the Cur- 6, the Curse of Michael Myers, would get a full-out special edition. So if you're a fan of this movie, which came out in 19, uh, let's see, uh, Halloween 6, 666, Halloween 666, The Curse of Michael Myers. Of course, I'm not going to be able to find this that easily right in front of me, right? Oh, here it is. 1995 was the release year of this film. And I saw this movie in the movie theater, and I always appreciate it. Directed by a guy named Joe Chappelle. Um, Once again, it says writers Deborah Hill and John Carpenter, but they were not the writers on this film, I don't think. Um, I don't know where IMDb gets its information, but it's not always correct. It's written by Daniel Farrens. Actually, Daniel Farrens is the guy who's uh, responsible for some of these uh, these these extended documentaries and horror series that we've been watching. I'm pretty sure, like um, uh, Never Sleep Again, and um, and what's the other one? The Friday the Thirteenth one, the the Crystal Lake one. <clears throat> so Crystal Lake Memories. So yeah, um, Halloween Six is a fun movie to watch if you like the series and if you're a fan of the series. <clears throat> it. Goes, it continues right from like basically Halloween Five. It, uh, it continues from that storyline, and you know they they go on with this whole Thorn thing, which I actually kind of liked, where it's like you know Michael Myers is controlled by this evil bunch. Here is the uh, the summary. I will read you the summary instead of just blabbing on and on. It says six years ago, Michael Myers terrorized the town of Haddonfield, Illinois. Um, he and his niece, Jamie Lloyd, have disappeared. Jamie was kidnapped by a bunch of evil druids who protect Michael Myers, and now six years later, Jamie has escaped after giving birth to Michael's child. She runs to Haddonfield to get Dr. Loomis to help her again. Meanwhile, the family that adopted Laurie Strode is living in the Myers house and are being stalked by Myers. It's the curse of Thorn that Michael is possessed by that makes him kill his family. And it's up to Tommy Doyle, who comes back, actually, played by uh, Paul Rudd, his first film appearance, which is pretty cool, um, Who the boy from the original Halloween, and Dr. Loomis, to stop them all. So yes, that's The Curse of Michael Myers. You know, it's a fun movie from 1985. According to IMDb, it was released September 29th, 1995, which I guess that's when I saw it in the movie theater. So, um, yeah, entertaining movie. Um, as far as uh, what's better, the producer's cut or the theatrical cut... Personally, I kind of almost like the theatrical version a little bit better, but um, the producer's cut is has cooler stuff in it and it has better pacing. There are good things about both of them, although neither one of them is great. So that is it. But this is like the kind of like the crown jewel of the set. This is the real the reason why the set exists because of the producer's cut being released by Screen Factory and Anchor Bay. And the transfer for both is decent. The transfer for producer's cut is actually a little bit better. Um, this is, a, I think, a better transfer than what was available from Echo Bridge previously. And it's packed with bonus features that you didn't get through that. So there you go. All right. So now we move on to... We're on H2O. So H2O, 20 years later. And I remember when H2O came out, and we were all pretty excited over the fact that 
you know, this is 1998 and um, uh, Michael Myers is returning and it's directed by Steve Miner. Okay. Plot synopsis is Laurie Strode, the original Laurie Strode played by Jamie Lee Curtis from the original two Halloween films. Now the dean of a North California private school with an assumed name must battle the shape, Michael Myers, one last time, and now the life of her own son hangs in the balance. Her own son is played by um, Josh Hartnett in, I think, his first role. It's his first, his first film role. Um, yeah, it sounds weird to say this movie has LL Cool J in it, but he's a good actor in the movie. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, Adam Arkin. And uh, Michelle Williams, actually, is in this as well. I mean, this is uh, during that Scream era. So it has a feeling of Scream. And the only problem that this movie always suffered from is the mask changes so much in this movie. There's a few points where the mask is pretty good. There's actually one shot where it's a digital mask that looks horrendous. But, you know, they screwed up for some reason and they had to fix it. So whatever. I don't even know how that got by the production crew, to be honest with you. But um, this new version that's out by um, uh, Screen Factory in Anchor Bay has a commentary with director Steve Miner and Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis, moderated by Sean Clark. Uh, a making of H2O featurette with Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, a uh, ton of people. This is a really good making of, actually. This one is, is, is very watchable. It's like an hour long, and it's really good. Vintage interviews and behind-the-scenes footage, which is stuff that was actually kind of included, I think, on the previous DVD release that had come out um and a theatrical trailer and and it is framed in the proper aspect ratio two three five to one and it has the and it has a 5.1 master soundtrack which sounds great so this is totally an improvement over the echo bridge blu-ray that came out actually it's a great looking it's a good looking transfer you know i've noticed with these dimension movies from the 90s they don't look that great i think they were finished digitally so they're masters that are like di's and so like i don't know i could be wrong on that one but it's almost like these are the only masters they have of these movies and they'd have to go back and retransfer them in order to have a new master. But, you know, this is a I, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this movie more rewatching it than I originally did with it. So that being said, it's definitely worth a view. The disc is uh, worth it. Um, it. It feels like a Scream movie when you're watching it. And it's very short. I mean, the, the running time of the movie is actually 86 minutes, but the, literally the credits are like 10 minutes long. So it clocks in at like 75 minutes. So it's a fast movie. Has a great ending. They should have ended the series here. But of course, the way they end the series, apparently they plan on going on. So I'm not going to give too much away, but it, it, has, it has a really good ending. And I don't know. I, I enjoyed this rewatching it. It's a lot of fun. If you're a fan of like the Scream movies and stuff like that, then this is this will be up your alley because it's from that era and it feels like it. So now we are going to move ahead even more and we're on to Halloween Resurrection. Okay. Honestly, it's not... This is deemed the worst Halloween movie of the entire series. It came out in 2002. Jamie Lee Curtis came back. Uh, director Rick Rosenthal from Halloween 2 came back. Um, this one was, it's even though IMDb says it's written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, it's not. This one is written by, where was the credits here? I'm looking at the back here. Based on characters created by them. Story by, screenplay by a guy named Larry Brand and Sean Hood. Directed by Rick Rosenthal. Movie came out in 2002. Jamie Lee Curtis is in the opening of the film, which is nice. A um, little bit of a spoiler alert here. I, I won't give it away. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis gets, you know, it's the demise of the Laurie Stride character. Lord Laurie Strode character, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, good film. It's okay film. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis, Buster Rhymes, which is kind of annoying. He's kind of annoying in the movie. This movie was really going off of the found footage thing, trying, you know, like, uh, it, it reminds me, the, the, here's the, the summary for it. I'll read the summary. Okay. Um, yeah, weird. Some random people, like, I guess anyone can submit a summary. And it doesn't seem to be an official summary. Just a synopsis. But anyway. Serial killer Michael Myers is not finished with Laurie Strode, and their rivalry finally comes to an end. But is this the last we see of Myers? Freddie Harris and Nora Winston are reality programmers. Freddie Harris is Buster Rhymes. Nora Winston is, uh, Tara. Um, Somebody. Tyra Banks, um, uh, which is interesting casting. 
are reality programmers at Dangertainment, and they are planning to send a group of six thrill-seeking teenagers into the childhood home of Michael Myers. Cameras are placed all over the house, and no one can get out of the house, and then Michael arrives home and kills a bunch of people. Interesting movie. Yeah, that's all I can say about this movie. It's, uh... I don't think it's as bad as people, you know, say it is. But... It's a totally generic, by-the-numbers kind of slasher film, and they really should have stopped with H2O. H2O is not the greatest movie in the world either, but it should have ended there. That's all I can say about that. Um, the transfer is decent on this disc. Um, it's got an audio commentary director Rick Rosenthal, alternate endings, deleted scenes. Um, they're wearing head cams in the movie, so you can actually watch the footage they shot with the head cams. Um, most of this stuff was included on the previous DVD. This isn't... Um, the previous Echo Bridge DVD was actually pretty good, and this isn't really much of an upgrade from that. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, it's not the Echo Bridge disc. It's a new disc uh, with new menus and stuff like that. Um, yeah, if you like um, Resurrection, that's where the series kind of starts to fall apart. So, yes. Okay. Ugh, this is a bit exhausting. Uh, let's keep. I got two more movies left to go here. Two movies that I actually enjoyed. So. Let's discuss them. Now we are in to the Rob Zombie remakes. Halloween, the Rob Zombie remake. Now what's included in this set is the unrated director's cut, not the theatrical version. And the theatrical version had a different, had some different footage in it. Although I kind of like the director's cut better, so that's cool. These are the exact same discs that were released by Sony prior to this set. So in other words, these are the ones that you can find out there. Um, it includes the disc two, which is, um, I mean, they literally are the same discs when you look at them inside the packaging. Um, it has a, like a four hour documentary on the making of the movie that Rob Zombie filmed, akin to the one that was on his, like like the one that was on the Devil's Rejects uh, DVD that came out. Although it, didn't, it wasn't included with the Blu-ray of the Devil's Rejects, but um, I kept my DVD, so I still have it. Anyway. So, yeah, you got deleted scenes, unrated director's cut, um, an alternate ending, uh, featurettes on the, you know, re-imaging of Halloween and stuff like that. Basically, this is a redo of the original Halloween, you know. Um, it came out in 2007, uh, directed by Rob Zombie. Uh, it was written by Rob Zombie, the screenplay, written and directed by. Scout Taylor Compson, Malcolm McDowell plays... Uh, Mr. Dr. Loomis, and he's pretty good as Dr. Loomis. Tyler Maine is uh, Michael Myers, and the mask is pretty good. And I gotta say, Tyler Maine's pretty damn creepy as Michael Myers. So, after being committed for 17 years, Michael Myers, now a grown man and still very dangerous, escapes from the mental institution where he was committed as a 10 year old. And he immediately returns to Haddonfield, where he wants to find his baby sister, Laurie. Anyone who crosses his path is in mortal danger. This movie, I, I, I like this movie in the movie theater. It's got Dee Wallace in it. It's a fun movie. Um, Danielle Harris is back in the movie again, and she plays... Um, what was the character's name in... Uh, Annie. The character of Annie from the original is what Danielle Harris plays in this one. And it's really good. I, I mean, I, I've always enjoyed this movie. It has its faults, yes. The first half of the movie is really interesting because it's a backstory of like a young Michael Myers. And then you get almost like a play-by-play -play remake of the original Halloween after that. Which, oddly enough, I used to always think like the backstory was the better part, but when I rewatched it, the remake part is actually pretty good. Like, it's intense, man. It turns Michael Myers into a killing machine. Like, and I've always appreciated this movie. It's not an amazing movie, but especially, it's not one of Rob Zombie's better movies, but I, it's a good remake. And without this, we wouldn't have Halloween 2, which I love. I, I think his remake of his his Halloween 2 is great because it is a 100% it's a Rob Zombie movie. So yes, aside from the original poster art and the packaging, this is the same disc that was available in the previous sets. So just uh, putting that out there. <clears throat> same thing with Halloween 2. Now we're into Halloween 2, which was uh, Halloween remake was 2007. Halloween 2 was 2009. <clears throat> this is the director's cut of Halloween 2 which is, you know, I, I personally think it's a better movie. Um, it has all the same cast. It continues from the very end of Halloween 1, just like the original Halloween 1 and 2. Um, <clears throat> everyone comes back. Uh, the plot of it is Laurie Strode struggles to come to terms with her brother, Michael's deadly return to Haddonfield, Illinois. Meanwhile, Michael prepares for another reunion with his sister. It's pretty basic. 
But I think there's a lot going on in this movie that's really good. This is a Rob Zombie movie through and through. And if I had to say some of my favorite Rob Zombie movies, I, I this is one of my favorite Rob Zombie movies. I think it's in a it's a great movie, especially in its unrated director's cut. Because you know, I actually did not like the movie in its theatrical cut. When I saw it in the movie theater, I didn't like it at all. I thought it was boring and kind of dumb. But the extra footage added into the unrated director's cut, which is basically like dealing with Laurie Strode kind of losing her mind. Like, you know, she's crazy now. She's older. She's kind of like a, you know, a punk rock kid. And, you know, I, I get it. I, I get what they were going, where they were going with this character. And I really like it. And this is a great follow up. And it's almost like Rob Zombie got to make his own movie here because there wasn't any preconceived notions with this movie so rob zombie gets to make his own movie here and it is a rob zombie movie through and through michael myers is a freaking killing machine and he is brutal and terrifying in this movie and these are not your old halloween movies these are halloween one and two the rob zombie movies are their own universe not connected he retells the story in his own way and i i appreciate this and i always love this movie and you know i i defend it and i i honestly think that people should give this movie another chance because a lot of people hated this movie and i think halloween 2 is a is an excellent piece of filmmaking from rob zombie um brutal i mean i don't want to give too much of it away by explaining the whole movie it's just it's a great it's it's a good movie give it another chance if you like rob zombie's movies definitely watch the unrated director's cut because i feel that's a far superior version of the movie so yeah so that is that. And it has a bunch of bonus features on it. Uh has Captain Clegg and the Night Creatures music videos, which I really liked, and uh from the 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 uh the Phantom Jam that's in the movie, which is a great sequence in the film. And that is it. That is the set. That is the Halloween 15 disc deluxe set. And I have gone through the whole series and I hope I gave you some interesting information and I hope you liked it. Um yeah, I don't have much more to say on that here, but happy Halloween, everybody, and you know, if you're so inclined, pick up the set. There's also a 10 disc version of the set that doesn't include the bonus disc. For, it does include the producer's cut of Halloween 6, which is kind of the reason to buy it in the first place. And it doesn't include like the bonus discs for each one. Although uh, there is a bonus disc to the set. It's funny because it's not listed on this thing, which has tons of stuff. It's got some uh, featurettes on it, some new interviews, uh, new documentaries on Halloween 4 and 5, which is really cool. Um a ton of the Horace Hollowed Grounds where they go to the locations for five, 4, 5, and 6 and the original Halloween. Great stuff. Uh, a bunch of bonus features, just, you know, interviews with different people on the making and stuff. So that's a really cool one. Oh, and it has the um, the Halloween, sorry, uh, extended version. Not the TV version of the original Halloween, but the original theatrical version with the extended scenes edited back in. And they are up-converted from standard definition, the... Um, the added scenes but the movie itself is in hd they use the uh the transfer the dean cundy approved transfer so yeah that's kind of cool if you i mean there are a lot of people that like that extended version of halloween so that's included on the bonus disc so that's the 15 disc set man that is a mouthful and a lot of stuff to talk about but um i hope you know you guys enjoyed this uh episode and i hope you get something out of it um, like always, check out Roadkill Entertainment at jburn75.wix.com slash roadkillentertainment. Um, you can get our movies there. And uh, yeah, come also check out our movies for free online right now. They're online for free and you can check them out. So cool. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and happy Halloween, folks. And hopefully we will have an episode for you in November. So look forward to that. Take care. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Give him tulips like roses and clover. Then tell him that his lonesome nights are over. Sandman, I'm so alone. Don't have nobody to call my own. Please turn on your magic beam Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream Make him the cutest that I've ever seen Give 
give him the word that I'm not a rover Then tell him that his lonesome nights are over Say, man, I'm so alone Don't have nobody to call my own Please turn on your magic feet oh, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream Bum, 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 bum Sandman. Yes. Bring us a dream. Give him a pair of eyes with a come hither gleam. Give him a lonely heart like Polly Archie. And lots of wavy hair like Liberace. Mr. Sandman, someone to hold. Someone to hold. Would be so peachy before we're too old. So please turn on your magic beat. Hi, I'm writer-director Jason Byrne. Jay Byrne is what I go by on my movies. Within the past couple of years, I was involved in a movie called You Better Watch Out. Now, you've heard us, if you listen to uh, the podcasts or if you keep up with Roadkill Entertainment, you've heard us talking about You Better Watch Out quite a bit. I also made a movie called Hometown and a documentary called The Final Episode. However, you know... We've been trying to get this movie out there. We've been trying to get people to watch it. There has been a handful of people that have seen it. We've uh, screened it at a film festival. But we decided, you know what? We just want people to see this movie. We want you, the fans, anybody who's interested in watching it, to be able to see it. So, at least for the foreseeable future, until January 1st, You Better Watch Out is available to watch for free on you on the youtube channel the roadkill entertainment youtube channel easiest way to find it if you want to check out you better watch out and this is free no subscription no nothing required to watch this movie you can go on youtube you can watch it. if you have a roku device literally all you need to type into the roku device the search bar for for your youtube app on the roku device is roadkill entertainment you better watch out it so it's 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 r e y b w o so R E Y B W O. Just put that into the, the you know the little search bar, and you're all set. And you can watch. You better watch out for free. If you're on a, a regular computer, you can go to YouTube. Just put the little um uh, hashtag symbol and R E Y B W O, and you can watch. You better watch out for free. You can watch the whole movie. It's the same exact movie that we've sold that people have gotten their hands on. Nothing different, nothing changed about the movie whatsoever. So, so please check out our movie um, and, and, and write to us. Um, leave comments on our page. Let us know what you think of the movie because you know, we, just, we, just, we just want people to see our film. You can also see uh, Hometown, the final episode, and um, uh, an old anthology I, call, I, I made called VHS. Basically everything that's available through Roadkill Entertainment is for free to watch on our YouTube channel right now. Um, I'm not sure how long that's going to stay there. Um, hometown uh, VHS in uh, the final episode are probably going to stay there permanently, so you can check those out at your own leisure. You better watch out. May only be there until January 1st. We haven't really discussed that. So from uh, Michael Welch and myself, we put a lot of love and a lot of heart into this movie, and we love it, and we hope people, will, our fans of ours, love it. So please, check out You Better Watch Out, free on YouTube. Just type in R-E-Y-B-W-O into the search engine and it should come right up. Or you can you can you can just you can go to the uh, Roadkill Entertainment um, page on uh, on YouTube. So please check out our movie and let us know what you think. Thanks. <laughs>